Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough, and this is episode, I think, 71, 72, something like that. We're getting crazy with it, but anyway, this is still our, it's still the first month of 2016, so um, this is a show where we talk about the dogs we love and the stupid human behaviors we don't, also known as shubs. So um, I want to talk about today the art of whining. This is what we get into counter with our dogs all the time and possibly with the people in our lives, which is awfully annoying in both cases. Um, so before we get into the dirty details of all of that, I want to remind all of you that there are still some classes available at Blue Collar Working Dog coming up. On January 24th, we've got Movie Tricks 2, um, and we also have... Um, uh, the pack leadership seminar. Why I'm going blank, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the pack leadership 101 seminar that I've been uh, conducting for almost seven years now. So it's a people only three hour one woman comedy show about dogs and behaviors of the dogs and how we interact with them and how we should, uh, you know, watch what we're doing so we can actually get the obedience and the nice relationship with the dog we always hope for. So if you're interested in that, if you're in the LA area, you can go to bluecollarworkingdog.com to check that out. Um, if you are from another location, by the way, I have conducted seminars over Google chat, um, not that Google needs this free advertisement, but I have done Google Chat, and so if you want to get a bunch of people in your neighborhood or whatever to get and sit in your living room and put on a big screen TV with my uh, mug on it, and we can have a seminar over the phone, and it's a little cheaper for everybody, but I can do it over the internet. Fantastic. So um, if you need to do that, you can contact me at thatdogtrainingshow at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Kazzy, K-A-Z-Z-I, dog train. And you can follow me on Instagram at that dog training show. Um, and I'm also on Facebook, That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough. So coming up soon will be a YouTube channel as well. I'll give some little... Um, tips. You'll actually see my face while I'm talking. It's the magic of video and sound put together. Um, so I'll be announcing that when it's up and running and ready to rock and roll. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, have a little more fun with that. That should be it's just a little extra work for me. I might actually have to put on makeup. Mm, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, so back to today's topic, the art of whining. I was inspired because of just recently in the last, oh, three weeks, I've had two different dogs uh, that are famous for separation anxiety and whining and howling during the day and all that good stuff. Um, along with other anxieties, actually. They had anxieties with other dogs. They got anxious when they were outside. So they were basically a bunch of jerks on the leash when it comes to uh, being outside. And um, they had done all kinds of training, etc. So both the owners of these two different dogs um, had... Um, you know, really kind of at the wit's end, had to leave town, and I'm the crazy person who's willing to have him come into my home and drive me nuts all night. So I haven't had much sleep for the last three weeks until last night, which was amazing. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's talk about why whining happens in the first place, and there's a multitude of reasons. And because this is sort of a forecast, there are multiple reasons of why whining happens with the dogs. Um, there are multiple reasons or ways I... Ways in which we can correct the situation. So, um, one of the things that is a common reason for whining for a dog is that the dog actually wants something. Um, when this is not addressed appropriately, the whining will actually re uh, escalate to demanding barking and even possibly aggression if they don't get what they want. I will explain uh, shortly how that happens, but that's one reason why dogs will whine. They want something. Another reason is that they are excited. Um, it can be positive or negative. So I, you know, the, there's that apprehension or anxiety situation, or they're just really excited to see you. Either way, it's excitement. It can be happy. It can be not so happy. But the excitement is is the main reason why the whining. It's sort of an escalation to, you know, it's, it's past the licking of the lips sort of thing. And uh, then eventually leads to greater vocalization or actually movement like lunging or what have you or jumping on you when they see you when you come home, etc. So, and sometimes that's combined. It's they're excited to see you and they want your attention. So they're it's this uh, really high 
high energy whining situation with your dog. So that's another reason. Um, there is also the anxiety, and there's also kinds of different kinds of anxiety. What the reason for the anxiety is it can be separation anxiety. It can be uh, a nervousness about meeting other dogs, um, what have you. So there's also another reason, and whining can be because of pain or some sort of um, some congenital dysfunctional system. You know, something medically wrong with your dog, um, or just an injury, or, or what have you. So um, those are big things for that. Um, now, why you should or how you should deal with the whining is quite interesting. I was looking up articles on you know, whining and how different people decided to resolve the issue. And the number one way I found was this, you know, use positive rewards, da-da-da-da-da, you know, don't punish the dog, da-da-da-da-da. I'm just like filling in blanks with the da-da-da-da-da. And um, that, you know, you should do A, B, and C and never be upset about it. Well, I'm going to disagree and modify um, because there's two things going on. There's, as you, if you've listened to my show before, you've heard me talk about this whole movement of the all positive training thing and how oftentimes it has caused more problems when, when it comes to, you know, behaviors in dogs than it's solved. And it's really only meant for controlled environments. Um, if the dog is whining, anytime we give them a positive reward, we are encouraging the whining, right? You see this with little kids in the grocery store. They they are whining for their candy bar. The the parent or guardian does not want to deal with that, does not want to appease that, does not want to give them the candy bar, so the child escalates. Now, how much the child escalates depends on if the child has ever been rewarded for giving for whining. So if the parent or the other parent who is not present at the time has ever rewarded the child for whining, the escalation is fast and intense. Same thing happens with dogs. So this whole concept of using positive rewards for whining is poop. It's absolute poop. So it's not worth it. What you want to do is actually correct the whining, and that's not the same thing as punishment, folks, you little, like, pansy, poopy-headed people. It's not, it's not the same thing, okay? Here's the deal. Corrections means you're addressing the anxiety, means you're actually either verbally or you are physically addressing the issue. And I say physically because dogs are dogs, and they are physical with each other. So it doesn't mean you have to be mean or rough. It just means you have to actually talk to their body, okay? You need to talk to their body because we cannot sit down and have a cup of tea with our dog and talk to their brain and have a cognitive and linguistic conversation with them. We have to talk to their body because this is coming out of their body. Excitement, nervousness, wanting something. This is now physical because it is whining. So... We can't converse with our dogs unless we train them to hear and respond to certain words. We actually have to talk to their body. So a correction is a way to talk to their body. It has to be physical in the beginning, preferably married with a verbal, depending on the situation. And then you go into, uh, you can just use verbals in the future most of the time. That's the concept, guys. So you're going to have to do some touching, some body work, something like that to actually talk to your dog, all right? So I'm not going to fall for the crap that, you know, correcting your dog physically is the same thing as punishing. It is not. So there you go. I'm off on my bad wagon with that one. My little soapbox is done. Moving on. So... To actually address the body in the whining, you have to use a correction. You cannot use positive rewards in the moment. Now, after the correction, depending on why the dog is whining, you might be able to offer something positive, but only after you ask them to do something for you and you reward that. Bingo. That's the basics, okay? Correct. Pause. That's the forgiveness moment. 
ask for something else, they give it to you, you may now give them a positive reward. The idea is, is that you put that pause, it makes it longer and longer, and eventually you encourage the dog to offer you the behavior you keep asking for automatically, so now it is disconnected from the sequence of whining, okay? Because if you do it immediately every single time, I whine, I ask you to sit, I give you a treat. I whine, I ask you to sit, I give you a treat. Now they're going to whine so they can sit and you can give them a treat. You want to say, I whine, I correct it, we pause, ask you to sit, give you a treat. I'm not saying sit's the best option, I'm just saying there's a sequence here. Then the next time there's whining, you whine, you correct it, you pause, maybe a little longer, ask for the sit, give them the treat. This is all going to be within a few seconds of each other. And then eventually when the dog starts offering the sit right away, you can say good sit and you can pause before you give them the treat. And then eventually you get rid of giving them the treat. You just say good. And they get and it's disconnected now with enough seconds between the correction and the and the and the the sit. Eventually they just stop using the 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 whining and they just sit when they want your attention. Hey, much better. So this whole concept of giving a positive reward to correct the whining is really simplistic and not helpful to someone who's reading it, who's like a lay person who doesn't, you know, you're, you're sitting here trying to get information. That's BS. It's not exactly, you know, it linear. Oh, you whine. Oh, hi. Okay. Well, here's a treat. Well, now they're going to whine for the damn treat every time. And if you wait too long, they're going to start screaming and howling and, and pawing and jumping and barking which is what I've seen a lot of times, okay? Like that's when people call me. All right, so so here's the deal. If the dog is looking for attention, okay? And this is going to require experimentation. You're not going to know right away. You're going to have to like figure out what the sequence is. What is the dog doing? What happens after I correct it? What are they looking at? What is it, you know, those sort of things. You're going to have to But if you have figured out that they are going they're they're whining for your attention, then the key is not to give them attention, right? So Yes, you still have to correct them, but now it has to be a physical correction without you verbally responding to them and without you looking at them and without you turning to your body to them, okay? So this requires, like, for instance, if you're standing there and the dog's just whining and you've got them on a leash with a collar, if they're whining just because they're excited, they want attention from you, you're going to double tap that leash and release as if you had a spasm, but you're not going to say make a, a corrective noise with it. You're not going to say good when they got better. You're just going to give them a correction, address their body, period, because they're looking for even negative attention from you. And if you just act like you just had a spasm instead of like, you know, actually recognizing their whining, the whining will eventually go away. All right. Now, here's the difficulty. And this is what I dealt with over the last three weeks is if the dog is in the crate, you can't talk to them. If you go over and say, shh, it gets worse. It, they start howling. They start ripping things up. And you'll mistakenly think, or a lot of people mistakenly think that means that the crate is such a horrible, horrible place for them. No, they're messing with you. They're messing with you. They have got your attention and now they're going to escalate because they didn't get exactly what they wanted. See, sometimes it's both. They didn't get exactly what they wanted, which is to get out of the crate and be able to own your space and cause mayhem. Okay? Or do whatever the hell they wanted to do. Okay, who knows what they're thinking. All right? So, the deal is, is that when they're in the crate, you cannot physically correct them and you can't verbally correct them because you have just given them attention. So, this is where I use vibration collars, sometimes with a little electric shock, depending on how bad the excitement level is in the crate. And so, I'm going to tell you right now, here's a little sidebar, get a little soapbox here. Those things work for the right situation, and if you don't overdo it. So, I get a collar, an e-collar they call them, with a remote on it that's rechargeable, and I... For whining, I will use vibration, like a 40 out of 60. It kind of 